I don't think this one went as people would have predicted. You know, the Nets seemed like they were coming home to not a soft landing spot, but certainly some more manageable games after the gauntlet they went through to begin this season. And you thought you were going to see desperation from this team as well, given the one and four start. And Richard, in the NBA, we know sometimes teams just have ridiculously hot shooting nights. If a team hits 23 threes, in the course of the season, you may have a game like that where you just say, well, look, they just shot the lights out. But in the context of what the Nets have been going through, the way they've been allowing open threes, the way they've been struggling defensively and how badly they needed to win, it feels like it's tough to just accept that for this night. That's a tough loss for the Nets this evening. It, it, it is a tough loss. And, and part of the issue is like, look, they're shooting the ball well, so your antennas have to go up. And a good defensive team, if the antennas go up, we might change our schemes because they are hot and you recognize it. Or you gamble less or you let make less mistakes. Like I, like that steal for Kyrie, I understand in theory what you're doing, but at that moment, you're leaving the leading scorer in the game, right? And I know he's not Kevin Durant, but that's the equivalent to leaving Kevin Durant to try and go right. for a steal late in the game. And so, you know, they're in such a hot mode that they're making you pay for all of your mistakes. And uh, we talked about it probably three or four times tonight. Like, oh, you can't leave the corner. You can't leave the corner. And these are high level, high IQ. Ky Kyrie has played in multiple NBA finals. He knows, you know, the mistakes that you can and can't make. So there was a lot of gambling that wasn't necessary, especially when a team is shooting that hot. Defensively. What, what's happening, Richard? I mean, the gambling, the miscommunication. Why is that happening with such consistency? How do you correct that? Well, look, you have a ton of offensive players. Make no mistake. And so you have to do it. And you don't have a great uh, a great uh, big man to, like, block shots or to clean up the glass. So you have to do it collectively. It has to be team defense. And, and even then, when you're looking at the offensive players on this team, offense ain't the problem. Mm -hmm. But you have a ton of offensive players who might not necessarily be defensive minded. That's where Kevin Durant, being the leader that he is, we saw some of the block shots. You need more from Clax. And I think Royce uh, Royce, Royce O'Neal, him being more of a 3 and D guy, and even getting Morris back, who is one of the tougher guys in this league and a very great competitor. So, you know, you're gonna, you got to find that defensive unit that when you need stops and, and they can make some, some momentum with their defense, not just their offense. You know they're going to get that. Offensively, the other thing that's interesting to point out, and we talked about during the game, Richard, this was – another game and this has been a really consistent theme this season where in the first half the ball is hopping and the nets are creating great looks for so many players and then the second half gets stagnant gets iso heavy gets maybe overly reliant upon Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Why do you think there's such a dramatic difference in what we're seeing offensively half to half? Well, a lot of times what you do, now you want to try and make it consistent, and we talked about this during the game. When you are playing that type of offense, it's to make sure that everyone gets involved because mm -hmm. it'll make it easier for KD and Kyrie down the stretch if Joe Harris has 10 points, if Patty Mills has 8 points, if Claxton has 3 or 4 dunks. Now down the stretch, things open up for them. So that's a, that's a, that's a uh, the way they're doing that is very tactical but you have to maintain that to a degree late in the game and because they have so much offensive talent even though KD and Kyrie are elite they still have great players around them so there should be more of a consistent assist effort down the stretch. Now as much as things don't feel great right now for this team a one in five start a tough loss to Indiana we know it'll feel a whole lot better if they can just get a win. They have another opportunity to do that Monday against the same Pacer team, Richard. Well, yeah, and I think that game right there is going to show us, in my opinion, a lot about who these Nets are. This, to me, is somewhat embarrassing. You let a rookie go for 33 points on you. You you have a very young team that's inexperienced, that's coming off a of back-to-back. If you're not in there pissed off, if you're not in there frustrated, and if you don't come out and try and send a message, maybe not even to the Pacers, send a message to your fan base send a message to yourself as a team that yes this was you know an embarrassing loss from a standpoint of like we could have performed better at a higher level so go show it tonight you know if they show me some of that in the next game i'll be impressed